Hello, welcome back. Fred, literally in the shed, which is probably why you can hear all the background water noises <laughs> of the pond. Um, do a little video today about helping newbies, new people coming back to radio, getting onto sideband, because it is a little confusing when you come back to radio, understanding sort of sideband, because a lot of has changed in the 30 odd years that has passed. Back in the 80s when we was all on, of course, we had just had the 40 UK FM free, you know, channels and everything was fine. So um, for this video, I'm gonna thank uh, Thomas K. I I won't say his full name, but Thomas K. on Facebook that uh, contacted me and asked me to make this video, but other people have requested it uh, in the past. If you're obviously, if you're an experienced radio user, um, you've seen all this before. So uh, I'm not telling you, you know, please watch for the amusement factor, but uh, don't hammer me in the comments if I get things wrong. This is just a sort of a basic guide. Now for this new purpose here, I'm gonna be using the Superstar 6900N. I, I think this is a great radio for people coming back to radio, CB radio, because, you know, for all intents and purposes, though you've got lots of buttons and you have got lots of functions built in the menus, it is quite a complicated radio like most of these sort of Chinese radios are, but it does have a familiar channel display which helps you not get lost when you sort of go around the frequencies. I'm also using, I'm just gonna scroll this down here, my little toolbox power supply that I made using a uh, LED lighting switch mode power supply. Now I made that a little while ago. I did make a video on that and I will put it as one of the pop-ups at the end. Very cheap to make, including the box. I think it was about less than 15 pounds to make that. And uh, that puts out 13, 0.8 volts and around 17 amps maximum power and that is plenty enough for the 6900N. If you're unsure, I mean you can go online and check, check the spec of the radio that you've purchased and uh, that will give you the, the current, how many amps the radio needs, but if you're unsure you can always just look in the fuse that came with the radio. I think these come with a 12 amp fuse and that will give you an idea of the maximum kind of current being drawn and if you add just a few amps on top of that just to be sure that gives you an idea. So Thomas sort of messaged me and Thomas said that he's getting a little bit confused with sideband concerning what frequencies he needs to tune into to find uh, to find signals. Now the first thing you've got to understand about sort of sideband radio it is just not like the uh, the 40 channels that we had on CB. When you when you turn on the radio, um, it's most likely, unless you're very, very lucky, that if you flick around the channels you've got and the bands on this radio, you probably won't hear anything straight away. Sideband radio, it relies on something called propagation. Now, what, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, um, I'll leave a little uh, pop-up come up on the screen now. You need to really go on to Wikipedia and it's worth just reading about shortwave radio. Um, it's only about 10 minutes. If you read through that, it explains all about propagation and how, how it works. But in a nutshell, just to sort of give you an idea on this video, around the top of the, uh, on top of the Earth, about 80 to 300 miles, we have a layer called the ionosphere. And uh, what that is, that becomes charged by solar radiation. And when that is charged, it will reflect radio frequencies below 30, 30 megahertz. So what that means in effect is that when that uh, ionosphere is charged with radiation, if we transmit a uh, signal from our radio, it will go up, it will hit the ionosphere, and then it will bounce back down. Now where it comes down depends basically on the charge of the ionosphere and what time of the day it is. It could come down um, say 200 miles away, for example in the UK I could contact someone in France, it could come down a thousand miles or 1500 kil kilometres away. It just, it's a bit random but, but generally in the, uh, in the daytime in the UK you, you're going to mainly get the European stations this, uh, this sort of time of year. Later on in the year as towards the autumn um, hopefully you might start getting some USA stations. But as I say, it's, it's, it's useful to go away and uh, just have a look at that. Now, as well as the 
ionosphere being charged by the, the sun, it's also affect by, affected by a sunspot, sunspot cycle. Um, the more sunspots you get, the more solar radiation, the stronger the reflection is. Now, this tends to sort of peak around about an 11 year cycle. Now, unfortunately, if you're just coming onto radio now, the last time it peaked was 2014. And on, when it was at a peak, you could go on pretty much all of the bands on a sideband, and you had signals coming in all the time in the daytime once the, once the sun was up. So, unfortunately, it peaked to 2014. Your next peak is going to be around about 2022 to 2026. So, at the moment, we are right, unfortunately, we're at the bottom of a peak. That does not mean that you will not get propagation and you will not pick up foreign stations, which is what we would call the old skip. You will get skip, but it just means you've got to work that little bit harder for it. And it can be what's known as sporadic. In, in other words, it can come on, suddenly the bands can come open. Uh, you might get maybe an hour, 45 minutes of communication, and then it's unpredictable. Then it can drift off again and they go quiet. So around this time, when, when, when the solar cycle is very low, and as I say, it is a bit unpredictable. If you're um, retired, if you're fortunate enough to uh, be retired, then a good thing to do is, is just have your radio on in the background, tune up to the uh, triple nickel, the 27555, which is the unofficial international calling station. Just leave your radio on sort of sideband and just leave it on in the background and you will hear hopefully some point in the day the bands will open and you'll know now if like the rest of us you know you haven't got you haven't got all day to sort of sit in your shack and you're working and things like that um i know it's had some bad press recently with kind of customers sensitive information and, and sort of things like that but to be honest facebook is is the way forward and you know don't if, if I, know, I know a lot of people are put off by facebook now don't think it's full of loads of teenagers and lots of 20 somethings because they all moved away from facebook um many years ago facebook to the younger generation is completely naff because it's all full of old codgers a bit like myself guys you know into their 50s late 40s right up to my mother who's actually in her mid 80s and she is more active on Facebook than I am. So it's the older generation now that have sort of kind of taken over sort of Facebook. So it's fairly sensible, you know, it, it, there's not what you, you would sort of expect. Now, what I've done, um, if you're worried about your information being shared around the internet, and to be honest, you don't, well, you do have to worry about that, and then you don't, you know yourself, the moment you go onto the internet, you know, with cookies and things, you're being tracked. Those adverts that pop up, onto uh, even as you're watching this YouTube video, adverts that might pop up, pop up are directed to your own search interest. So you're being tracked anyway. But if you're worried about that, do what I've done. And I set up a Facebook page, Fred Shed, solely for my radio hobby. Um, there's no personal information on there. There's no pictures of me. There's nothing about my family. There's nothing about my address. It's purely about radio. Now, once you get onto Facebook, there's a few really good radio sites that you want to check out. One is the official Charlie Tango Facebook group, and you'll find lots of good information on there. And what will happen is people will be on the radio themselves, and as soon as the band's open, they will put up either little videos or they'll put up little kind of like uh, posts, if you like, saying that, yep, the bands are open, or, you know, I've got Germany coming in, I've got France coming in. Um, another one is also CB Radio UK. Again, that's a very good group. And there's quite a few, you just need to search in. If you put in a search in the search box, CB Radio, you will get a host of groups, including our CB Radio Europe group. And just join a few groups. And just, you know, just monitor that on your phone or your tablet or your PC. And uh, that will let you know when the bands are open so you know when to switch on switch on the radio another person that's really worth kind of keeping tracks on is a guy called derek boyd uh, also known as del boy now del boy puts up videos all the time of skip letting you know when the uh, bands are open and i will link in the bottom in the description i will link his uh, youtube page and he's worth he's worth keeping an eye on he's a very useful guy and a very knowledgeable guy on uh, radio itself Right, okay, we've got that out of the way. Turning to the, uh, turning to the radio itself. Now, as I say, it, the 6900 looks like a CB radio, but it's not. 
a CB radio is in fact a 10 meter ham radio transceiver it it has been which like your one it has been pre-programmed to incorporate the 11 meter CB band but by, f by default it is not a CB radio so you need to be a little bit of aware of the frequencies that the radio will tune on and the ones that you can transmit and then the ones that you can't. So this radio came, um, this is a UK radio, this is how it would be supplied from someone like Knights, something like that. And on the, on the UK radios, band F has been pre-programmed with the FM 40 channels. So you, you, that is your regular 40 FM channels. As long as you've got your mode there in FM, there we go, we've got our usual sort of channels. But obviously the band switch goes from A to F. So what we're interested in is A to E. So if we flick this all the way down to, uh, to A, and then we turn the channel selector there all the way down to one, you'll notice that our lowest frequency we can go to is 2605 band mode up, and we go up to E, for example. And if we go to channel 40 on, uh, on E, you'll see there that we're now in 28305. Now we are now in the 10 meter ham radio You band. go over 28 and I think 10 meter starts at 28315, but basically the moment you're over 28, you are into the ham meter, the ha sorry, the 10 meter ham band. Now you can listen on here, you know, if you have a flick around, um, you might be lucky you might pick up some sort of you know radio ham communication you're perfectly legally entitled to listen but you cannot transmit if you transmit you are then technically a pirate and if you do communicate with any hams you know hopefully they will politely they will politely tell you that you are frequency and to cease communication if you want to get into 10 meters that's great you know but basically you know find your local radio uh, groups do do your ticket and do it properly. I, I do not condone at all actually pirating on the uh, on the ham bands. Of course, this radio, in, in its effect, because it is a ham 10 meter radio, it is not 100 percent well, it's not legal. It's not Ofcom legally approved in the UK to use anyway. So you are technically breaking the law, even if you stick to the 11 meters. But you know that's your own conscience. Um, that's really, you know, that's really all I do. Um, and then do the same on band C. Now there are some particular frequencies, like we say, like the 27555, which is the un un unofficial international calling frequency. Um, there's there's a website that I'll, again, I'll link the, the uh, link to that in the description called Foxtrot Lima, and they have a list of all of the official and unofficial calling frequencies on sidebands which uh, are very useful if you want to just go on there and quickly check those out if you haven't got time to to scan all the way through now when you hear a station and, and, and it'll be sod's law today that we won't get one um as i say i think we're pretty much closed today well there we go we've got a slight station there And there again. So we've got a little skip coming in here on 27205, so we're in frequency. Now, when you first do, do the scan run, if, if you can't understand what's being said, for example, now that's become very distorted, first thing you want to do is just check your mode mode selector there and just flick through the modes FM, AM, USB, LSB and although it's very faint you can hear straight away that we're picking it up on USB but it's still not very clear so the next thing to do is to adjust your clarify control so let's give, give that a little turn one way or another. There we go. And that is your fine tune.
So just to just to clarify, to you getting the, to you actually receiving what you can hear, it's Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse, high and low. So there we've got a foreign station coming in. Now they're talking a, uh, a foreign language. Now you could try and interrupt this station. It's probably not the best one to get your first contact. But you could transmit and you could say QSK. Now Q codes is uh, something else that I probably need to do another video on. If you go away and you Google radio Q codes, it's something that's used. Um, now a lot of people have criticized us on the 305s because we're just kind of CB radio guys and you know people have said that we've tried trying to impersonate ham radio operators because we use a few Q codes um, No, that's not really true It's just that when you when you're actually on sideband and you've got to get some foreign DX in the Q codes are just the in, in, international kind of Code that's under, understand we, we can all understand each other using the Q codes basically um, so what I'm saying there is for example uh, QSK now if you want to get in, 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 in on a Station, some stations that say they were English speaking and they're sort of chatting away, it's, it's a group, it's a net. Now you can just key up your microphone like you would do and you can sort of say, yep, breaker on the side, breaker on the side, like we used to back in the CB days. But they probably aren't going to leave a massive gap between their communications, people tend to forget. So you, you might not get that in and you could say break, break and hopefully they'll hear that and they'll say, yep, break station, please stand by and then, yep, break station, go ahead and then you can communicate. Or you can also use uh, QSK. QSK basically means, and I'm probably going to get picked up on this by some hams, but in a general term it means that I'm a station on the side and I want to join into your group conversation. So when there is a gap, don't, don't key over people, but when there is a gap you can then yep, QSK and then and release the key. And then sit back and hopefully you'll hear, yeah, oh QSK acknowledge, please stand by and then they will bring you in. Now the way they bring you in, hopefully, they'll bring you in, they'll say, yep, yeah, QSK, yep, yeah, please go ahead. Um, this is, I don't know, I say it's me, this is Fred, 1664 St Albans. And then you can come in and say, well, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm, to okay, this is Thomas, um, yeah, I'm, I'm in Surrey, yeah, thanks for letting me in. Or they might say, yep, yeah, QSK, QRZ. Now QRZ means, yep, yeah, please come in, we're going to accept you into the sort of conversation. But you have to sit back and wait to be, you know, invited. Uh, sometimes they can forget and someone else might jump in, So, but it's, it's polite to, uh, to sort of be invited. Now the next thing is um, Charlie Tango call signs. Now I got a little bit of criticism on the last video that I did on this. You, you don't need a Charlie Tango call sign. There are other groups as well, uh, Tango Mike for example. They're not official radio call signs, but they help you get contacts on sideband. Now, I did a whole video on that, which again, I'll, I'll try and leave a little um, pop-up at the end of this. Um, Charlie Tango call signs are, are free. You just have to register a forum um, and you will be issued a Charlie Tango call sign. Um, one guy did have a bit of trouble. I know he got really frustrated. There was a bit of a problem on the site. Yeah, these sites are run by kind of, you know, people in their spare time. Uh, they're not being paid for what they do, of course. So you have to sort of allow for families and things to get in the way. So you've got to be a bit patient with this, you know, don't beat people up. But you get yourself a Charlie Tango call sign. But you don't need a Charlie Tango call sign. If you want to break in to, say, an English speaking net, you can key up the mic. Yeah, break, break, QSK. Oh yeah, QSK, go ahead. Oh yeah, you know, thanks for letting me in. Um, yeah, you've got Fred here. Yeah, I, I'm home based in St Albans. Um, the things they want to get, they're going to want to know is first your location. So yeah, I'm in St Albans. He might cut. So let's say it's Charlie. Yeah. Oh, hello, Fred. Yeah, this is Charlie. Um, I'm in Cambridge. Oh, hello, hello, Charlie. Now, generally, most people will want a signal report because um, you know Cambridge to St Albans is a fair trip. So Charlie's going to know really how I'm receiving him. It's a test of his equipment, and uh, so obviously you've got your signal meter there running from one to uh, to plus thirty. Now, with a signal report, for example, let's say Charlie gives you a signal report. He'll say, oh, hello, Fred. Yep, you're coming in, Fred. Yep, you're five by seven, Fred. Five by seven. So, <laughs> what does that mean? Five by seven? Well, the first part, the five part, 
is the quality and the of your audio if whether you can be understand understood now that runs from a five which is good all the way down to if you're in illegible and they can't really make you out that would be a radio one so it's radio one to five now a five if you can hear the person that is communicating with you and if you can hear him and understand sort of every word even though there might be some static in the background but if you can hear it and it's clear then that is a radio five if it's slightly cutting out in the static it's a bit intermittent but you can still make it out and hold the conversation but you're going to work for it that would be a radio four um, radio three you know you're really starting to struggle struggle maybe his sort of signal is up and down um, but you can still just about hold a conversation or what is known as a QSO or QSO yeah that's about a radio three and then it goes down to radio two and then really a radio one which is pretty much sort of illegible that you're really going to sort of struggle you might be getting sort of every third or fourth word so when Charlie says to you yep Fred you're five by seven the first part is yeah I'm radio five that means he can understand what I'm saying so we're eight, we, I know I'm able to continue the uh, cue so now I'm able to and then the seven is the signal strength what's coming in on his radio so I'm, I'm a signal seven which is a good signal and I'm a radio five so when he comes back to when he sort of again comes back to you now on my station I can understand what he's saying so he's a radio five but his signal might only be four because my antenna might be slightly lower than his so I'll go back to him and say hello yes thank you Charlie for that report um, yep to me Charlie you are five by four five by four so then he knows that I can understand what he's saying and here's a signal for. Now another thing that you might find on International Station is the uh, QSL. Um, again, it's a broad term, it doesn't exactly mean that everything is understood, but people gen to, gen, just gen to use it as that. So if someone comes back to you and say, so, so let's say I, I'm on a net here and I want to break in, so I get me, uh, get me a little mic and I go QSK and I'll sit back and wait and they say yep yeah, QSK go ahead or QSK QRZ and I'll say oh yes good afternoon I will give my Charlie Tango call sign I'll say this is 26 Charlie Tango 1664 uh, St Albans UK and he'll come back to me oh yep yeah, 26 Charlie Tango 1664 this is I don't know Delta Lima 1664 yep yeah, receiving you QSL now QSL bit means that basically yeah I am receiving you I've understood what you've said and are you are you receiving me so I would then go back to him and I've got a call sign now Delta Lima 164 yep yeah, this is a uh, yep yeah, 1664 yep yeah, returning to you yep yeah, all copied there yep yeah, QSL and then he'll know that uh, I'm receiving him okay and then from that bit on you can then go on and do your radio reports he'll want to you know you, you, what, where's your location your QTH yep I'm St Albans UK um, if you're in a little sort of village or something if you're sort of not always pick a major town you know if, if you're near Manchester use Manchester always sort of if you're within 10 miles of London so yeah okay I'm just outside London people will recognize major towns and if they want a bit more detail you can then sort of sort of you know go into that um, and other than that once you're on it's just you know it's just general chat obviously uh, stay away from politics and religion things like that and you'll find that most people will be interested in the equipment you're using so you know for me I'll say yeah I'm using a Superstar 6900N uh, I've got an Antron 99 you know not running any additional power straight out the back uh, yeah back to you QSL and then he'll come back and he'll tell you so generally you know if, you, if, you, if you're not it's a bit nerve-wracking when you first go on radio certainly on sideband you know you, you do feel a bit mic shy you do feel a bit anxious um, it's, it's quite surprising unless you're very unless you're a very very confident person but coming back it is a bit of a learning curve but generally you know if, if you stick to the equipment ask them what radio is using what antenna everyone wants to talk about you know their equipment and then you've got things like the weather if you run out of things to say oh you know what's the weather like in in, in Stuttgart and he'll tell you oh yes my friend the weather and you can talk about things like that and then you know if you want to um, end, end the conversation just you know just politely say yeah okay well thank you very much okay yeah this uh, okay then blah 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 you know okay this is Fred 1664 um, for 73s 73s or 73 is again a radio ham term it, it means kind of you know goodbye you'll hear that a lot so seven threes um wishing you a wish you a happy you know good day uh, i'm going clear and then uh, obviously he'll come back and wish you seven three um as i say when you when you first start 
have a flick round, um, monitor that triple five, that's really the most active part of the, uh, there we go, there's someone on there now. So monitor the triple five, flick above and below triple five, go up a few bands, because when people get a contact they might go up to uh, you know, 570, 580, have a little flick around around those channels, around the sort of triple five. And just listen, this is what I did for about three months when I first, just listen to how contacts work. You know, you'll pick up the QSL, the QSK, QSYs, and just listen to how it works for a while before, uh, you know, you dive straight in. And it's always a little bit nerve wracking. Anyway, this video's going on a little bit too long. I hope that helps you. It's very difficult, um, you know, to try and sort of put it on camera. But I hope that sort of helps you uh, get sort of going. I will be doing a few more of these newbie kind of CB um, videos because I've got a lot of comments from people that me and Steve 318 we've, we've encouraged you to spend your money and you've got out and you've done what we said we've stuck an antenna on a pole and that's all you need a silver rod you know on a two or three meter pole on an umbrella strand or dig it in your back garden you know shove, shove it in the ground get your antenna up and when the skip comes in like now and I've got that stuff coming in even though I've got a little bit of local interference, even it doesn't matter how high your antenna is, you will receive it. But uh, so I'm sorry that me and Steve have cost you a lot of money, but I'm getting a lot of comments. So as these comments come in, the ones that I can do quickly, I will do. Um, I think I did have a comment came in um, from a guy that wanted me to test runs of different coax, for example. Um, I can't really do that. I don't have the time to set it all up and then to buying the coax. And you know, you got. I'm a very small channel. I've only got sort of. Uh, you know, my videos my videos generally get about five, six hundred views, so it's pennies, do you know what I mean? So I haven't got really the resources to sort of do all that. I think that was that was total recall or someone like that. So, I can, you know, I can do short things uh, and things on the radio, but obviously longer things take time. Anyway, I've waffled on. Thank you ever so much for sticking with this. Sorry that it was a bit boring for your normal radio guys, but I do hope it's helped you. There will be some little links pop up on the end of this video for other well, some of my other videos you might be interested in and then look down in the description and I will leave a whole host of links to other information on the website that might help you. My throat's giving out. I'd just like to say cheers, thanks for watching, stay safe and as always I'll catch you all on the next one.